All right, so let's go ahead and do another Pythagorean theorem problem, this time with an algebra upgrade. Um, so in this problem, um, we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna identify our legs. Um, we have one leg that has a value of two X or a measurement of two X. We have another one that has this weird square root of nine X there. And lastly, we have three squared, um, our hypotenuse of three. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit. 2x times 2x, well two times two is four, x times x is x squared. Um, the square root of nine x squared, well those are gonna undo each other. You get the square root of nine x times the square root of nine x. Well, that's gonna equal the square root of 81 x squared. And of course, the square root of 81 is nine, the square root of x squared, x times x equals x squared, so that's just x. So I'm just gonna get nine x there. Lastly, three squared is just nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything on one side of the equation. And what I'm really trying to accomplish here is set one side equal to zero. And let's talk a second about why I'm doing that. The reason I'm doing that is my next step is to take this and rewrite it as the product of two factors. You should already have an idea of how to factor, but the important part now is if we have something times something else that equals zero, that tells us that one or both of those some things has to equal zero. And I'll talk more about that in a moment, but like I said, we have to first factor this. So I'm gonna use a method um, I like. It's a generic rectangle. Um, and it's just using rectangular model. If you are unfamiliar with this method, you can also do reverse foiling, or you can look up some of my videos on factoring where I go over this in more detail. To do this, we're going to break up our polynomial here into pieces. So I've got the four X squared, and I've got the negative nine here. And then what I need to now do is take this nine X in the middle here, and I need to break it up between these two pieces. When I break it up though, there's one more condition. So obviously these two things have to add up to 9x because they're just it's 9x being broken into two parts. But there's one additional constraint. These cross products have to be the same. So when I multiply 4x squared times negative 9, I get negative 36x squared. I need these two things to multiply times each other to equal negative 36 X squared as well. So what I like to do sometimes in situations like this is since they're gonna be negative, I know one of them's positive and one of them's negative. I know that I need two things that add up to equal nine X, but they also have to multiply to equal negative 36 X squared. Now, if you're not familiar enough with that, honestly, just guess. Um, so I find it a little easier usually to, to, in situations like this, to just add things together. So what if I tried um, 10 X and negative one X? Well, those do add up to nine X, but then when I try multiplying them, well, they only multiply to negative 10 x squared. So that's not going to work. So I need to try something else. Um, and you know, you could keep trying this. It does turn out that these numbers end up just being 12 x and negative three x. Those both sum to nine x. And then when we multiply them, they do in fact multiply out to equal negative 36 x squared. So those are the two spots that go here and here. And notice these add up to 9x. So everything that's in this box, if you add it up, it equals our original polynomial. And then we just go through and factor out the rows and columns. We pull a GCF out of those. So the greatest common factor of these two here is x. The greatest common factor of these two here, they both have a three in them, but the second one doesn't have an x, so I can only pull out a three. The greatest common factor of this column, they both have a four, they're both divisible by four, and they're both divisible by x. And then since there's a lead negative here, I'm gonna pull out a negative three, they're both, both divisible by three. Um, but what we just found is that if we multiply the base times the height, we're going to get 
our polynomial. So let's go ahead and write that out here. Perfect. And so what we're going to say now is that if this piece right here is equal to zero, then zero times anything is zero. So it'll work. So I'm going to figure out when 4x minus 3 equals zero. Or if this is zero, then zero times anything will be zero. So I'm going to also figure out when x plus 3 equals zero. And what we're going to find is one of these answers isn't going to make any sense. Um, so if we go through and solve these, for one of them, I get x equals 3 fourths, and there's no immediate reason why that couldn't work. I'm going to try out this one here, and we're going to see why this one is not a possible solution. We get x equals negative 3. Well, that seems a little weird, so let's take a look at that. If I take this x equals negative 3 and plug it in to, for example, this right here, well... That's going to equal negative 6. Well, I can't have a negative side of a triangle, right? So this solution here just doesn't make any sense. Now, if I plug in the 3 fourths, I am going to get some fractions, but that's totally fine. So here I would get 6 over 4, or 3 halves. Here I would get, here I would get the square root of 27 over 4. Um, which is also totally fine. And of course, this side remains as three. And so, you know, we could verify this by plugging it back into the Pythagorean theorem, but at the very least, I'm not seeing any really obvious errors here. Um, and depending on how concerned I am with the solution being right, um, I could go through and more meticulously check my solution. I am, in fact, sure that this is correct. Um, so I'm going to leave off here. Um, but again, if you are unfamiliar with factoring, go refresh looking at some of those factoring videos. It'll help you out.